Hi, this is Derek Tangren from the Adobe Analytics product team. I'm going to walk through an incredibly powerful new feature that we've released inside Customer Journey Analytics called Derive Fields. This will allow the type of functionality Adobe Analytics customers may be familiar with from processing rules, reimagined in a whole new way, utilizing the benefits of the Aries reporting engine that powers CJA. Let's look at a couple of examples of how you can put this new feature to work with your data. In our first example, we've received different values for some of our pages in our page name report. CJA already allows us to exclude values if they've been collected incorrectly, but this is a different situation. These values represent valid data. We just haven't collected them in the right way. It may have been that a code release inadvertently changed one of the values we were sending in, or perhaps it was collected slightly differently on another platform, such as in our mobile app, and we didn't catch it. Regardless, it's fragmented our report and made it a lot more difficult to do meaningful analysis. Let's head into data views and see how derived fields can help us quickly clean this up. Within data views on the left hand side, you'll see a new button called create derived field. When I click on it, it takes me into the derived field builder and gives me several options to work with my data. In this case, I'm going to choose the find and replace function, but there are a few different ways I could actually solve this using either the case when function or even the lookup function. I'll start by selecting the field I'll be working off of. I can do this in one of two ways. First, I can use the schema field navigator to locate the necessary field, or if I know it, I can type the name of the field and have it present me a filtered list of options to select from. Once I select the field, I can then start building out the rule to fix what's displayed in my page name report. As I enter rules, I'll get a preview of what the final output of my rule will be based on the last 30 days of data. As I build out additional rules, the preview updates accordingly in real time. Once I'm confident I have everything cleaned up, I can give this new field a name and save it. Once I do, it shows up as a new field under Derive Fields in my Schema Navigator on the left. I can then drag that into my data view. The cool thing is that I can still apply any of the standard right rail settings that I have with normal schema fields. So if I want to update what we call no value or apply persistence to this field, I can do that. I save my data view and head back out to Workspace. Here in Workspace, I'll refresh my components, find my new page dimension, and drag that over. I now have a report that correctly displays the values of my page name for analysis. These are non-destructive changes to the underlying data, and so if I need to make further refinements, I can do that. Let's take a look at one more example. In addition to cleaning up values, Derive Fields makes it possible for us to create entirely new fields. One common use case is the creation of marketing channels based on data you've collected. We'll start off with a couple of building block reports that we'll base some of the logic on for our marketing channels. We have our referring URL and our page URL fields, but this could look different based on our data. With this example, the page URL has a query string and values that indicate the channel it's associated with. We'll head into data views again and build this out. Now, I could build this from scratch, but in this case, I'm going to utilize the marketing channels template. Templates act as a starting point for common rules, and we'll continue to add additional templates over time. When I drag the marketing channels template over, it automatically adds several functions to my canvas with some portions of them pre-configured. This first rule utilizes a field that collects the page URL. So I'll use my schema field navigator to select and drag in the right field. I'll also fill in my query string parameter that I'm using to identify my campaigns. I'll do something similar for my referring URL. 
with those two rules populated, I'll start to get some results back. Next, I'll want to modify the rest of this template to meet our unique setup. We have some referring domains pre-populated for search and social identification, but you can augment these to include additional ones as you see fit. As I go through, I'll specify other criteria for email and display. I'll also add in some affiliate sites, as well as my internal URL. Finally, I'll add one additional condition to account for some other referring sites I want to break out in their own channel. To do so, I'll reference the above referring domain rule, select my operator, copy the domains in, and then choose to set a custom string value. The last modification I'll make is to select to have anything else set to no value, which in this case will be the equivalent of direct traffic. I'll give this derived field a name and save it. I'll then add it to my data view, save, and head back to my report. The last step is to simply drag in my newly created marketing channel dimension and I'm all set. Keep in mind, if I need to go back and modify it, it's easy to do that and have those changes apply to my full set of data, not just on a go forward basis because these changes are being applied at report time. There is much, much more you can do with derived fields, and we're super excited to see how you will use this powerful new feature of customer journey analytics. Thanks for watching.